She's on the Mount Rushmore of Florida talk show hosts. And she's on your radio now. 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 It's the Joyce Kaufman Show on News Talk 850 WFTL. Welcome back. Joyce Kaufman with you. And as I promised, uh, just a a whole slate of interesting guests in this hour. But I'm going to start off with one of of my favorite guests. Authors, Dr. Andrew Bostom, who has written a number of books, almost I think all of them dealing with the subject of Islam, and has a new book out which is uh, unbelievable and and couldn't be more timely. How are you, sir? Thanks so much for having me on. Thanks for your kind words. Oh, well, you deserve them. I mean, you've been fighting the fight a long time in spite of every effort made towards any of us who dare to talk about this subject to be branded as, uh, you know, Islamophobic and racist and all the rest of it. Um, it, it's a it's a, a battle that needs to be waged because the rise in anti-Semitism in this country, I can find the the links, and you've made the case in your new book uh, between Islam and these uh, anti-Semitic feelings in places around this country. Well, I have to say, Joyce, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the Anti-Defamation League. They've moved <laughs> way to to the left. Right. But one thing I do give them credit for, um, and they haven't, uh, they haven't really sold out. They sold out in terms of interpretation, but they conduct the most comprehensive, the most thoughtful surveys to, to at least assess uh, the, the, the prevalence, the occurrence of extreme anti-Semitism and the populations that have extreme anti-Semitic attitudes. And what they do, it's very straightforward, Joyce. They take 11 anti-Semitic stereotypes. And they question each respondent that they survey. And you have to be a pretty extreme anti-Semite, and that's what they call them, to agree with at least at least six of these anti-Semitic stereotypes. And then they just simply determine the prevalence, the occurrence of, of this degree, uh, and they label it appropriately, extreme anti-Semitism in all the populations they study. And they literally go around the world, mm-hmm. and they update, and they repeat Everywhere they look, not just the Muslim Middle East, everywhere they look in Muslim populations in what are now called diaspora populations in in Europe and even in the United States, disproportionate rates of extreme anti-Semitism, two to threefold the non-Muslim populations of Europe and now even in the United States. Of course, in the the worst anti-Semitic countries in the world, hands down, where the prevalence of this degree of anti-Semitism is anywhere from 74 to 93 percent, all 16 of the worst anti-Semitic countries in the world are in the Arab Muslim uh, Middle East. But what's disturbing is as, 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 as you see this, this migration and this growth of Muslim populations in Western Europe, and, and I'll come to the United States, they're bringing those attitudes with them, not as severe. Not, you, know, the, the, you don't get 73 to 94 percent of 93 percent of these populations, but 55 percent, 50 to 55 percent of European Muslims now uh, have this degree of anti-Semitism. In the United States, a very philo-Semitic country, the background rate, maybe a little higher than people would suspect, is about 14 percent already amongst U.S. Muslims, based on ADL data that was uh, collected at the end of 2016, beginning of 2017, 34%. So the same relative increase, you know, about two and a half times Mm -hmm. the background population rate. Um, These are ADL data. Now, they hide from them as best they can, Mm -hmm. um, but but there's there's no escaping them. No. And, and you know, there's, it's on public display for the first time. I and mean, we, we have elected representatives, you know, who make public statements, um, which are pretty, you know, blatantly anti-Semitic. You know, it's all about the Benjamins from uh, Ilhan Omar, the uh, congresswoman mm-hmm. from Minnesota. You have Rashida Tlaib talking about, you know, my people suffered more in the Holocaust than they gave a home to the Jews. I mean, when they say this stuff out loud, when you have prominent um, uh, Muslims saying this stuff out loud, it's got to fuel and increase the anti-Semitic feeling in those communities. Well, a- a- abs- absolutely. It's sort of a, it's a, sort of a top-down, bottoms-up phenomenon, not just from the politicians, but from the religious teaching institutions. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you know, Islam has its, has its certainly Sunni Muslim Vatican equivalent, and Sunni Muslims are about 90% of the Muslims in the world. And that's Al-Azhar University. 
the the last two grand imams or papal equivalents uh, of Al Azhar uni- University have been virulently anti-Semitic, including the current grand imam, the the, the previous grand imam who died in 2010, Muhammad Sayyid Tantawi, was the greatest. Quranic commentator of the modern era. He, he was a prodigy as a child who memorized the entire Quran, went on to engage in, in, in very detailed Quranic studies. Mm-hmm. Bottom line is, he published a PhD thesis of, uh, as, at Al Azhar called uh, Jews in the Quran and Traditions. And then he went on to write this massive Quranic commentary, the most important one for Sunnis in the modern era. He takes uh, anti Semitic verses from the Quran. And he gives them a gloss. He gives them an interpretation that, if anything, makes them more anti-Semitic. Mm-hmm. And this is the pinnacle of Islamic religious edu- education. Mm-hmm. His successor, the current Grand Imam, gave an interview in 2013 and basically went over a Quranic verse. It's in the fifth chapter, 82nd verse of the fifth chapter. And basically, it's like, it's like a psychological transference verse. He basically says that Jews harbor the greatest uh, hatred of Muslims. And therefore, he said, this is the rationale for 1,400 years of Muslims hating Jews and being upset by the by the trauma Jews have caused them. He said this in a in a in an interview in 2013. No one challenges these 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 things, uh, Joyce. This yeah. is the problem. The Jewish community is completely silent when when this kind of teaching takes place, and it takes place in the United States. We just had in mid December an imam who actually runs the prison system imam program in the state of Washington give a routine lecture on a Sunday night in his Quranic study group in Redmond, Washington, where he goes over the Quranic verses in the fifth chapter, 60th verse, uh, about the Jews as apes and pigs. Very Mm -hmm. matter-of-factly, you know, and and this is is going on routinely all over the world. Yeah. And, 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 you know, what you just said is so important to me, the fact that we literally... Um, have to start stepping up as members of the Jewish and the Christian community and stop trying to placate um, this leadership. I mean, today or yesterday, I think it was, Islamic and Jewish leaders were visiting Auschwitz uh, like it was a, a, a... a trip to Disneyland. Come by up. Yeah. Dr. Mohammed yeah, it, bin it, Abdul it, Karim it's, it's, Alisa. It's a complete, look, mm. the, the, the Jews are being used as foils. Yeah. So, so, so the Muslims can distance themselves from Auschwitz, of course, without any mention of, of, uh, of the, the, the Muslim papal equivalent of the World War II era, Hajimin el Husani, who, who embraced right. Hitler. Of right. course, that, that gets pushed off to the side in the dustbin. We shouldn't think about that. But, but they use the Jews as props mm-hmm. so that they can say this is all a product of Nazism. It has nothing to do with the Islamic world. You know, we're not guilty. We, you know, we, we're, we're philo-Semitic. We're, you know, Abrahamic faiths. It's pure propaganda, and it's a distraction from, from the ADL's own data, which right. shows you that it's an overwhelmingly Muslim problem in our era. Right. And the AJC uh, head, uh, David Harris, you know, he keeps putting these things together where he invites these uh, prominent you know, 62 Muslims, I think he just took, from some 28 mm-hmm. countries on several continents. And and I, I'm offended by this, you know. I'm it, very, I, I, share, I share your being offended. I will tell you. When when I uh, when I when I uh, described that interview that Tayeb gave uh, in 2013, the current Grand Imam, mm-hmm. you know, going back to the Quranic roots of of of, uh, of Jew hatred and and and, and championing them, mm-hmm. um, I I saw no reaction from the Jewish community. I happened to know personally here at Wilders in 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 the Nephilim, yeah, and I wrote me to too. him and I said mm-hmm. here. You're, you're so, you know, you're wonderful. You get it. He's actually studied Islam. Right. Could you say something? He, he more than said something. He put out a public letter, con- not only condemned al Tayyab, asked Pope Francis to condemn him. And, of course, it fell on deaf ears. Right. But, but a man of his integrity and courage at least made that gesture. Mm-hmm. No, and we can't get any of the uh, leadership, really, of the Jewish communities to, to speak out. I mean, the, I, I, this is not a groundbreaking visit. This is, uh, this is an, an insult, as far as I'm it's, concerned. It, it's propaganda, yeah. and, and it, gives, it gives the Muslims impunity, unfortunately, from, from questioning their own virulent and their own independent brand of anti-Semitism. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, you know, w- 
it's hard for me sometimes to understand the allegiance that so many people in in the in the tribe have to the Democrat Party, for instance. I mean, the platform of the Democrat Party is now, um, you know, just barely anti-BDS, and I, I suspect that within the next uh, couple of years it will be all pro-BDS, including mm -hmm. members of the of the tribe. And and I just sit here. And, and I'm amazed. It's as though uh, their, their political beliefs outweigh their, their brains. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, there is a long the, – the, the more, the more uh, Jews get hard left or stay hard left, however you want to describe it, um, I think the more prone they are, frankly, to, to anti-Semitism. I mean, if you look – if you go back historically and look at the horrible Hebron riots in, in, mm -hmm. in 1929, um, and if you look at the cartoons that came out in the Jewish press in the United States, the communist Jewish press, mm -hmm. they, 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 look like, they look like the antecedent of Der Sturmer cartoon. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are ostensibly Jews, but they were communists, so their real religion was communism. And they, would, they, were, they were condemning the, the, these, these Jews that were simply defending themselves from jihad violence in, 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 in pre-Israel. You know Palestine. Mm -hmm. I mean, so this is a, this is a long-standing problem, certainly on the hard left in 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 the, in the Jewish community, epitomized nowadays, I guess, by people like Bernie Sanders. Right. Um, and and it's it's um it's it's very disconcerting. But I, I think the larger problem with the Jewish community in this country is, and it doesn't apply to just you know hard hard left Jews. I think Jews are terrified of being branded as quote unquote Islamophobes. Yeah. And and so and so that silences them. It's a very effective bludgeon that the Muslim community has used. And of course there's a there's an irony to that too, because Islamophobia or, or instilling fear in the heart of the infidel is is a classic jihad doctrine. Right. I, I, I mean so so now it's being used as a propaganda tool interspersed with sporadic violence. Um, but but it's it, it's effective either way, and it's really silencing the Jewish community from confronting what goes on in mosques, what goes on in Islamic centers in terms of what's taught to children, um, let alone what's going on in the major teaching centers in the heart of the Muslim world. Yeah, you know, when I, as I said before, this is very disturbing to me because I have a friend who's on her way to Poland with her 92-year-old um, survivor mother um, for a tour of the very same. Auschwitz and uh, that that these uh, imams were all visiting the other day, and to me, this is like the glitziest tikkia ever. Ah, oh, it's 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 uh, it's horrible. It's mm -hmm. a terrible, terrible distraction, and I I, I think you know um, people need to need to point this out, and and frankly, need to point out that. You know this, this this terminology now that you know finally because the the, the, the recognition that there's a disproportionate rate not only of anti-Semitism but of violent attacks on Jews mm -hmm. that's coming from the Muslim community and and and, it, and there's there's one set of data that's actually uh, queried the 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 Jewish victims of mm -hmm. violence. It's rare that the EU does this, but the only time they did it in 2013, it was very clear. It was about three to seven times. So when Jews were asked. You know, and these are these are non-lethal attacks because you know you have to you have to be alive to survive the attack and answer and answer the survey. Right. Um, they they were they were um, they were asked the nature uh, as they saw it of the of the perpetrator. You know, were they a Christian extremist? Were they a hard leftist? Were they, were they a Muslim extremist? Et cetera. Were they a right wing extremist? It was it was three to seven fold. Yeah. The, 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 the that they were coming from the Muslim community when the Jews. Victims were actually queried, so Man. it's not just attitudes; it's 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 it's, it's violence itself. Yeah. Um, for the new book, I chronicled um, 23 uh, attacks in this country since since 9/11. Um, seven that were were completed, 16, thank goodness, that were thwarted, and it runs right up to something that people aren't talking about enough. The Monty Machete attacker is a Muslim convert. Yep. that comes. From, from police records, it also comes from his stepfather of ten years. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, this is not even being discussed. No, well, that's right because you'll be called an Islamophobe, so exactly. you're not allowed to. But thank you so much, uh, particularly for all the great work you do. The newly updated book is "The Legacy of Islamic Anti-Semitism: From Sacred Texts 
text to solemn history. And it, you cannot debate this issue. You cannot even have a conversation about this issue unless you understand it. And you're not going to understand it if you watch television. You've got to read. So thanks so much for coming on. And, and Thank you, Joe. I encourage everybody to read this book. You take care. The book is Bye -bye. available on uh, all the various websites, uh, Amazon, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just look for Andrew Boston. Read all his books. If I hadn't read most of his books, I wouldn't know as much as I do.